Let's talk about how to solve trig equations. An equation is a trig equation if the variable you're solving for is located within a trig function. For instance, in my first example, part A here, I have 2 sine theta plus square root of 3 equals 0. I want to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, because there's infinitely many solutions, so to speak. So only do the ones between 0 and 2 pi. <laughs> so first thing I want to do is I want to isolate the trig function. So subtract square root of 3 from both sides, then divide by 2 on both sides. And trying to find out sine of what angle is negative square root of 3 over 2. <clears throat> First off, what quadrants is sine negative? That would be quadrants 3 and 4. So, all right, since sine is negative, theta is in quadrant three and four. So that's quadrant three and four. <clears throat> so now I'm going to draw my triangle. And I'm not going to put my angle theta here in the bottom left. This is going to be my reference angle my gamma, or as I like to put a question mark. <clears throat> Sine of this angle is square root of 3 over 2. Opposite is square root of 3. Hypotenuse is 2, <clears throat> meaning my other side has to be 1. So what angle is always across from square root of 3? What angle is always across from square root of 3? That's 60 degrees. That's pi over 3. That is my reference angle, and I have to move this angle to quadrant 3 and move this angle to quadrant 4. Those will be my solution data to this equation. <clears throat> so I use my formulas I've previously learned <laughs> to move an angle to quadrant 3. You take the reference angle and you add pi to it. Pi over 3 plus pi is 4 pi over 3. To move an angle to quadrant 4, and in this case I want positive quadrant 4, I take 2 pi and I subtract my reference angle pi over 3. So that is 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. So I have two solutions to this Turing equation, 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Those are my two solutions in the interval 0 to pi. Next. This one looks a little bit different because instead of just having theta on the inside of the trig equation, we have 3 theta over 2. So one way to get around this is, okay, well, let me pretend like I just have one given variable value inside of my trig function. So 3 theta over 2, let's just call it beta. So everything's going to be in terms of beta right now. Then we'll convert back to 3 theta over 2. In this example, I'm trying to figure out where secant is 2 over 1. First of all, though, since secant is negative, my inside of my trig function beta which is 3 theta over 2, 
is in quadrants two and three, because that is where secant and cosine are both negative. <laughs> I guess we can go ahead and draw our triangle. We have our mystery angle. This represents my reference angle. Secant is 2 over 1. So if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, this is hypotenuse over adjacent. <clears throat> and looky here, we're trying to figure out who is always across from square root of 3. Well, that would be pi over 3. Now I need to move this guy to quadrants two and three. <clears throat> so first off, let's move to quadrant two. <clears throat> so my quadrant two angle, which remember we're using beta here instead of all this theta mess that's inside the trig function. <clears throat> beta is pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. And then moving to quadrant 3, beta is pi over 3 plus pi. So beta is 4 pi over 3. But remember, this original question was not in terms of beta. It was in terms of theta. Theta, 3 theta over 2. I need to find out what theta equals. <clears throat> well, beta is 3 theta over 2. So substitute 3 theta over 2 back in for beta. I like to cross multiply 3 theta times 3 is 9 theta. 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. Dividing both sides by 9 gives you theta is equal to 4 pi over 9. <clears throat> and lastly, over on the right hand side, we have 3 theta over 2 because that's what beta is equal to. 3 theta over 2 equals 4 pi over 3. Cross multiply, 9 theta equals 8 pi. Theta equals 8 pi over 9. <clears throat> now these are two of my solutions, but we have a trick here. And the trick is, this tri the period of my secant function is normally 2 pi. So if I had a normal secant function here with just theta on the inside, <clears throat> adding 2 pi would clearly get me out of the interval 0 to 2 pi. But this trig function has a little bit different period. So the period is actually going to be <clears throat> 2 pi over whatever is inside the trig function, 3 halves in this case. So 2 pi over 3 halves, which is actually going to give you 4 pi over 3. This is the period of my trig function here, 4 pi over 3. It has been shrunk down from 2 pi. <clears throat> so what I should do, since the trig function repeats itself every period, I need to add 4 pi over 3 to each of my angles theta, to each of my initial solutions, and see if I'm still within the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we add this to each value theta. <clears throat> so first off, I take 4 pi over 9, and I'm going to add 4 pi over 3 to it. This would be 4 pi over 9 plus 12 pi over 9, which gives you 16 pi over 9. Is this less than 2 pi? It is, because 18 pi over 9 would represent 2 pi, so this is less. So that we have found yet another solution, 16 pi over 9. <clears throat> if you were to add another 4 pi over 3 to this, you would definitely get over 2 pi. Well, let's consider the other solution, 8 pi over 9. Let's add 4 pi over 3 to it. 
So I have 8 pi over 9 plus 12 pi over 9 gives me 20 pi over 9, which does exceed 2 pi, so this does not work. So it turns out we have a total of three solutions. I'll write them in order. 4 pi over 9, 8 pi over 9, and 16 pi over 9. These are the solutions that are in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So be careful on this one. You do need to make sure you add your period of your given trig function to each of your initial solutions because there could be a third solution lurking. So make sure you do that. As if that one wasn't enough fun, let's do yet another one. Step one, isolate the trig function. So add square root of three to both sides. And once again, rather than having just theta inside the trig function, we have theta over two. <clears throat> so if you want, replace theta over two with a different Greek letter. We oftentimes like to just use something like beta. So theta over two is equal to beta. Now I'm going to write square root of 3 over 1 because I often like to have ratios. <clears throat> I guess we're ready to make us a triangle. So my original reference angle, which I represent with a question mark, is here. So opposite over adjacent, square root of 3, 1, <clears throat> 2, who is always across from square root of 3. Well, if you haven't picked up on it yet, that would be your 60 degree angle, your pi over three. <clears throat> now I gotta figure out what quadrant these solutions are allowed to be in. Well, since tangent is positive, since tangent is positive, where is tangent positive? <clears throat> theta over two or beta. would be in quadrants one or three. So this pi over three, this reference angle here, I need to move it to one. Well, guess what? It's already in one. So that's less work we have to do. But I do also need to move to three. I need to move to quadrant three. <clears throat> So my solutions include beta is pi over three. We'll replace it with theta over two in just a minute. <clears throat> or beta is, take your reference angle and add pi to it. This is how we move an angle to quadrant three. We add pi to it. So beta is four pi over three. <clears throat> now, remember we, our answer needs to be given in terms of theta. So we write theta over two equals pi over three. We have three theta equals two pi. We have theta equals two pi over three. Now we also have theta over two equals four pi over three. We have three theta equals eight pi. We have theta equals eight pi over three. So our solutions so far are theta equals two pi over three, eight pi over three. But please be aware that because we had theta over two inside our trig function, we could have additional solutions between zero and two pi if we add the period of our trig function to our initial solutions for theta. Only way we're going to do that, though, is take our period and find it. Well, the period of tangent is pi divided by whatever is inside the trig function, which is one half in this case. <clears throat> so that would mean our period would be 
2 pi. which gets us out of the interval. Zero to two pi, if added to any of the given trig solutions. So we only have two solutions here, two pi over three, eight pi over three. So far, we've only been looking at trig solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. But what if we want to find all of the solutions, infinitely many solutions for our trig functions? <clears throat> so in this example, we're going to give the general form of the solution, then we're going to list six solutions. <clears throat> so sine of theta equals square root of 2 over 2. <clears throat> I don't have any side relationship of a triangle that has square root of two and two in it. So this is something we need to reverse rationalize here. And we get one over square root of two. Sine of theta equals one over square root of two. <clears throat> and a quick little note here, we write since sine is positive, the inside of our trig function theta is in quadrants 1 and 2. So we're in quadrants 1 and 2. <laughs> so let's build us a triangle with our mystery reference angle inside here in the corner. Sine is 1 over square root of 2, opposite over hypotenuse, <clears throat> which would mean the other side would have to be 1. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yes, my reference angle is 45 degrees or pi over 4. Well, I need to move it to 1 and 4, 1 and 2. It's already in 1, so I just need to move to 2. So theta is pi over 4, because that is the quadrant 1 angle. And theta is, how do you move an angle to quadrant 2? Well, you take pi and you subtract the reference angle, the angle that we found. So theta is 3 pi over 4. So I received pi over 4 <clears throat> and 3 pi over 4. Remember previously we had to take the period of the trig function and add it to these initial values found to find given solutions. <laughs> and that's how we find the general form of the solutions for this trig equation. The period of sine theta is 2 pi. So to find general solutions, we take each solution of theta and add multiples of 2 pi. So we add multiples of 2 pi. So my first general solution for theta, I'll represent it as theta sub 1, would be pi over 4 <clears throat> plus 2k pi. We know where the 2 pi came from, and k is just a uh, represents an integer. So for instance, when k is 0, you get the solution pi over 4. When k is 1, you add 2 pi to pi over 4. When k is 2, you add 4 pi to pi over 4, all multiples of, <coughs> of 2 pi. So this is plus 2k pi, where k is an integer. Then our second solution for theta is 
3 pi over 4 plus 2k pi. k is an integer. <clears throat> now they want us to list six exact solutions. So, okay, first we got our general solutions here. Done. Check. To find our six solutions, we'll plug in k equals 0, 1, 2, because this will give me 0 will give me two solutions, 1 gives me two solutions, 2 gives me two solutions. Yeah. All right, so when k equals 0, we'll start off easy here. Theta 1 is just pi over 4. Theta 2 is 3 pi over 4. And k equals 1, <laughs> comma. Theta 1 is pi over 4 plus 2 pi, which is 9 pi over 4. And then theta 2 would be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi, which is 11 pi over 4. Then k equals 2. Theta 1 is pi over 4 plus 4 pi. That's going to give you 17 pi over 4. Theta 2 is 3 pi over 4 plus 4 pi, which is going to give you 19 pi over 4. And you may notice some of a pattern here which there's lots of patterns in trig. In k is 0, you had 1 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. In k is 1, you had 9 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4. When k was 2, you have 17 pi over 4 plus 19 pi over 4. They all, all the numerators differed by just 2 for each of the values of k, which is a pattern that does happen here. So we had our solutions here, <laughs> six solutions. will be three pi over four pi over four nine pi over four eleven pi over four seventeen pi over four and 19 pi over 4. And these are six solutions that we obtained from the general solutions. And of course, there's infinitely many more, but these were the easiest six for us to find. So hopefully you learned a little bit about solving trig equations, and I appreciate you watching.